All right, so now that we've completed two gaming tests, we're on to round three, benchmarks. Let's see if the S24 Ultra can finally secure a W when it comes to raw performance of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 versus the A18 Pro. Quick note, for those who've seen my community post or Twitter, already know that iOS 18.1 is bringing huge performance gains in the A18 Pro due to Apple changing their boosting algorithm. Therefore, I'll definitely have to retest next month when iOS 18.1 drops. And for now, we're testing the performance as is with base iOS 18. And with that being said, as you can already see, we're waiting for Geekbench 6 to finish the first round so we can see a difference in CPU performance. And now with Geekbench out of the way, as expected, Apple has won this round. The A18 Pro has quite a large CPU performance gap over the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. From what I remember, even the A17 Pro already had a lead over the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, so this isn't too shocking. But needless to say, this is the first round of three, which will now focus primarily on GPU. For this first GPU test, we will use 3DMark's new cross-platform benchmark, Steel Nomad Lite. Now, you're probably wondering why I'm choosing this over Wildlife Extreme. Well, according to the devs, Steel Nomad is actually more demanding newer, and a more accurate depiction of GPU performance. Therefore, here we go. Now with the first GPU test out of the way, it seems the A18 Pro is not only ahead in peak GPU performance if we look at the best loop score, but also sustained performance if we look at both stability and the lowest loop score. In my opinion, the lowest loop score is almost always more important as this reflects what the device's true performance will look like after 20 minutes of usage. So again, the iPhone wins round two. So last but not least, let's conclude with the final round, another GPU test, but this time, Solar Bay, which is a ray tracing specific GPU test that measures different features of the GPU versus the standard non-ray traced gaming situations. This test should be interesting, given that the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 already had a huge lead over the A17 Pro in ray tracing. Now with this last round complete, we can see mixed results. The S24 Ultra clearly has higher peak performance, but then drops drastically lower than the A18 Pro when it comes to stability, and more importantly, sustained performance as we look at the lowest loop score. Because of how brief the peak performance is for the S24 Ultra, I'll still have to give this round to the iPhone due to better stability and sustained performance. Again, peak performance is nice, but what's the point if it lasts only a minute before dropping drastically lower than the competition? In conclusion, despite the claims, it seems the A18 Pro has pretty significant gains over the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 as it won all three rounds. However, the big looming question is how will the A18 Pro perform against the Snapdragon 8 Gen 4? This, my friends, is where things get interesting. In a few months, I'll have my hands on several Snapdragon 8 Gen 4 devices, so definitely stay tuned to the channel. Thanks for watching, and see you all next time.